Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and uh, this is a game of, uh, I think, Domination on Jungle, but uh, what's interesting about this is that um, I run pistol only, so uh, um, yeah, I know you probably saw me on the FAMAS class, but that's because I like Flak Jacket, but uh, this commentary is not about the gameplay. I will give a, a you know quick advice. If you're going to run pistol only, it's kind of like a shotgun, and that you really want to make sure all your engagements are, are up close. Uh, I have such a hard time aiming this... Um, uh, Python that I think I do you know at least as well when I just like spam from the hip fire as I do when um, you know when I aim down sights on it but um, uh, that's not what I want to talk about I, I had a commentary idea and um, so here's the thing I watched someone else's videos and he has the Siri of my first this my first that and I tried to, to search for it on on YouTube to give him credit for giving me the idea but um, uh, so I searched on my first girlfriend and there were so many people that had talked about that that it was like oh I guess it wasn't that uh, groundbreaking an idea because I couldn't pick him out from the sea of videos where other people had talked about their first girlfriends. But here goes. Uh, this is my first girlfriend story. So um, uh, in this, I'm not talking about my very first girlfriend. I'm talking about what I consider to be my first real girlfriend. Uh, my very first girlfriend would be like this girl in kindergarten who used to pinch my cheeks all the time and, uh, you know, whatever. Wasn't really much of a girlfriend. The one I'm talking about is Nicole. So uh, I met Nicole at a dance. I was in fifth grade, and um, and you know, it, so when I was dancing in um, you know a, as a kid, I was like that baller who um, who was like the first guy to dance. Like there'd be like six girls all dancing in a circle amongst themselves, and all the guys lined up against the wall. I was that guy who was like, you know, damn, look, all these girls to myself. Like, you, know, you guys stay on the wall. That's exactly where I want you. Uh, I'll be here with the girls. And um, and then inevitably, um, you know, once I did that, the, the like everyone would sort of like break free and, and do their thing. But, um, uh, you know, so anyway, towards the end of the night, there she was and nobody else was dancing with her which maybe like the wiser version of me sees that maybe there's a sign maybe um maybe there's a reason no one else was dancing with her but uh but the younger version of me was like god damn this one's not taken yet you know wrap her up so um so uh being a, an awful dancer i waited for a slow dance and then asked her if she would slow dance with me. And um, the way that I slow danced, even as a kid, was just like one step above foreplay. Like, you know, body to body, rubbing, um, you know, uh, as slow as possible. And, uh, you know, just pretty much just standing and hugging and uh, and doing my thing. So, um, so you know, we're doing this and I'm, uh, you know, taking this sort of awkward pose to, to make sure that my middle's not, not too close to her middle for fear of being found out. But, um, uh, yeah, so we danced like that for a while and then um, the fast songs came on. They played like two, maybe two slow ones in a row and then the fast song came on and I didn't want to dance anymore. It was like, oh, I'm going to embarrass myself. But uh, she held my hand and, and encouraged me to, to sort of man up and uh, do the fast dance. Now, I had practiced my fast dancing um, you know, to sort of get ready for this and uh, it involved pretty much me snapping my fingers while taking one foot and placing it behind the other in alternating uh, sequence. <laughs> so, uh, so I busted out my Woody's dance moves and, uh, and snapped my fingers and, and, and moved my feet. And there it was. So I danced with her for a while. And we pretty much danced all night long. Now these dances were dark, right? It's dark inside and there's, um, there's literally a disco ball. Do they still even use those? But uh, there's a disco ball and the lights are like flailing around and and we're on a um, like a, this large basketball court. It was like a town basketball court thing. So there were, um, you know, more hoops than I can remember. I don't know, like six or 12 or something like that. And uh, so it's this great big dance area uh, smelling slightly of basketball player. And, um, you know, I'm doing my thing at the end of the dance. I asked her out. Right. Because, you know. I'm not going to let this one slip away. And uh, and she said yes. Now, I was in fifth grade and she was in sixth grade. So suddenly I'm feeling like the big man, right? You know, not only did I land uh, a real live girl, right? Because she was really a girl and everything. But um, uh, I landed an older woman. So, uh, so kudos to me.
Well, um, I'm there bragging to my friends about uh, you know how I danced all night long with a with a genuine article girl and um, uh, and how she's actually you know a year older than me and how you know much of a baller I am because of that. Nice shot, Woody. But um, and then they asked me her name and I, I honestly don't remember her last name, but her first name I was like, all right, Nicole Demario or whatever her name was, and um, and they're like, what? N- Nicole Demario? Why would you dance with her? And I'm like, I, I don't know, dude. She's hot, and this and that. And they're like, she's not hot. So, um, so yeah, it it was really dark at the dance, and my friends were right. She wasn't pretty, <laughs> and uh, um, and that was my first real girlfriend. So, um, I uh, go, what do you go? Um, so, um. Uh, we like over the next couple of weeks, we talked on the phone and I remember walking to her house, which was like eight miles away or something ridiculous like that. But I was like, ah, you know what, how else am I going to see her? So, um, uh, so I walked to her house and, uh, yeah, I, I think I kissed her outside her house or something like that. Cause, um, to me, I was like, all right, you know, I'm committed to this thing and, uh, and we'll see it through. And then, um, uh, let's see. So yeah, I walked to her house, walked all the way home. I remember in the, I walked home in the rain. It was really pretty dreadful. And, and I'm looking now, maybe I was just too nice about this whole thing, but, um, uh, she, she really, um, every time I saw her, it was like, yeah, man, she looks so much better in the dark <laughs> than she did in person. And then I talked to her on the phone a few weeks later and, uh, a few weeks later uh, on the phone, she made fun of my jeans. Uh, my mom had, see, Levi's jeans were the ones you wanted to wear. I don't know if that's still true today, but, uh, if they weren't Levi's, you were wearing the wrong ones. That was just the deal. And, um, my mom had bought me Wrangler jeans, which I, I don't know, Brett Favre pimps them now, but at the time Wrangler jeans were, were clearly the wrong way to go. So, uh, uh, she was like, you know, why do you wear those? And I'm like, cause you know, my mom buys my clothes for me and I'm only 10 years old. And, uh, and she was giving me a hard time. And that pretty much was the beginning of the end of the relationship. Uh, it, it wasn't just that she was giving me a hard time about my jeans. It was the fact that she and her little girlfriend were both on the phone making fun of my clothes. It, like, like, you know, you're not in this with me. You're almost against me at this point. And, uh, and girl that, that won't go. So, uh, uh, I think I dumped her, which is a, a funny dumping, I guess, given that, um, uh, you know, I dumped her for being mean to me. <laughs> How much did she really like me? But, um, but the, you know, Hey, it's my story. And, I, and this is the way I'm telling it. I dumped her because uh, I didn't like the way she talked to me on the phone. And, uh, that was the end of that. Between uh, her and uh, my last girlfriend, my now wife, uh, there were a, a string of, of semi-successful relationships. Uh, I did keep being that that baller at the dance, though. Like, um, this is this is like something about who I aspire to be. Uh, you know, there are some guys who will sit there and be wallflies and be nervous. And there are other guys who will say, you know, you know what, this is an opportunity. Like all these other guys don't have, uh, you know, the sack to, um, you know, to go get these girls. But like right now, right now, there's like dozens of girls dancing in in circles with each other. And, you know, this is my opportunity to strike. This is my chance to, um, uh, to to get these girls while the, the pickings are so rich. And, uh, and I just kept on doing that through future dances and, um, and you know, that's how I roll baby. But, uh, um, if you like this, maybe I can tell more ex-girlfriend stories <laughs> and see how that goes. But, uh, my advice to you, if you're still young and, uh, you actually go to dances, I'm not sure if they're cool or not. They, in my time in school, they went from cool to uncool, but, uh, but be the baller, man. Be that guy that goes out there and, uh, and grab a girl by the hand. Uh, trust me. Uh, they want to be asked. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. And uh, until next time, have a good day.